Ordering Real Numbers, Lesson 1.3b. We can compare and order real numbers and list them from least to greatest. Here we have the symbol pi, we have 3 and 75 hundredths, and we have the square root of 2. We know pi is approximately 3.14, and the square root of 2 falls between the square root of 1 and the square root of 4. It's right here. So we know it's greater than 1 and less than 2. We can say it's approximately 1.4. So to order them from least to greatest, this would be least, the square root of 2, then we would have the value of pi, and then we would have 3 and 75 hundredths. By using perfect squares, we can approximate the values of irrational numbers to put them in order from least to greatest. The square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2, and the square root of 9 is 3. We know that the square root of 2 and the square root of 3 fall between 1 and 2. And we know the square root of 5, 6, 7, and 8 fall between 2 and 3. For 1 and 7 tenths compared to the square root of 5, well, 1 and 7 tenths is less than 2, and here we have the square root of 5. So we know the square root of 5 is greater. 1 and 7 tenths is less than the square root of 5. Here it's telling us to order from least to greatest pi, the square root of 3 plus 3, and the square root of 8. We think pi is approximately 3.14, so we know this value. And the square root of 3 plus 3 is going to be approximately, here's the square root of 3, so it's more, it's greater than 1.5, but less than 2. So we can say it's about 1.7. We need to add 3 to it, so we can say it's approximately 4.7, 4 and 7 tenths. The square root of 8 is approximately 2 and 8 tenths. Here's the square root of 8. It's greater than 2.5, but less than 3. And we can see the square root of 7 is in between 2.5 and the square root of 8. So we can say it's about 2 and 8 tenths. It's closer to 3. So to put them in order, we've got the square root of 8, which is about 2 and 8 tenths, pi, which is about 3 and 14 hundredths, 3.14, and the square root of 3 plus 3 is about 4 and 7 tenths, 4.7. And now they're in order from least to greatest. Here it's telling us to order the square root of 6, pi minus 2, and 3 and 2 tenths from least to greatest. And we think the square root of 6 is between the square root of 4 and the square root of 9, so it's between 2 and 3. We can say it's about 2 and 4 tenths. That's between 2 and 3. If we square 2.4, we get 5.76. Well, that's too low. We want it to be as close to 6 as possible. We can try 2.5 squared. Well, that gives us 6.25. That's too high. We went over 6. If we do 2.45 squared, that gives us 6.0025. That's very close to 6. So we could say the square root of 6 is approximately 2.45. And we think... Well, pi minus 2 is approximately 3.14 minus 2. That's going to give us 1.14. Now we can put them in order. 1.14 would be the least, so that would be pi minus 2. We've got approximately 2.45 for the square root of 6, so that would come in the middle. And then we have 3 and 2 tenths. That would be the greatest. Now, do you see what I did here? We found that 2.4 was too low and 2.5 was too high. So we can look at it as... We had 2.4, that was too low. Then we had 2.5, that was too high. If we put a zero here in the hundredths place, between 40 and 50 would be 45, wouldn't it? That's how I got the 2.45. I went between the one that was too low and the one that was too high, and that's how I found 2.45. Here it's telling us to plot the irrational numbers on the number line. We have pi minus 2, we have square root of 6, and we have 3 and 2 tenths. Well, pi is approximately 3.14, so minus 2 is approximately 1.14. So that's going to be about right here. It's not 1.5, it's in between 1 and 1.5. It's closer to 1. So it would be about right here. 
and the square root of 6 is approximately 2 and 45 hundredths, that's going to be about right here. It's not quite 2 and a half, so it's not quite 2.5. And 3 and 2 tenths would be a little bit greater than 3 and less than 3 and a half, wouldn't it? So it would be about right there. What's the square root of 20? Well, here's the square root of 16. That's 4. That's a perfect square. And the square root of 25 is 5. So we know the square root of 20 is in between 4 and 5. We can approximate its value by using squares of numbers between 4 and 5 to get a better estimate. We can try 4 and 2 tenths squared. We do 4 and 2 tenths times 4 and 2 tenths, and we get 17.64. That's too low. That's not close enough to 20. We could try one more tenth and do 4 and 3 tenths squared and do 4 and 3 tenths times 4 and 3 tenths. We get 18.49. That's still too low. That's not close enough to 20. We can try 4 and 4 tenths squared. Well, that's still too low. We're still not at 20. We're at 19.36. So we can try one more tenth, 4 and 5 tenths, but then we end up going too high. We're at 20 and 25 hundredths. So it's somewhere between 4.4 and 4.5. By adding a digit to the hundredths place, it's easier to see that we need a number between 40 and 50. So we could try 4.45. That's in between them. And when we multiply 4.45 times 4.45, we get 19.8025. And that's still a little too low. It's not quite 20. We could go up two hundredths to 4.47 and multiply 4.47 times 4.47 and we get 19.9809. That's very close. Now we could keep going. We could add a 1 to the back of this and multiply this times this to see if it gets closer to 20 or maybe a 2 and keep playing with it to find a more exact number, but we do know that the square root of 20 is in between 4 and 47 hundredths squared and 4 and 5 tenths, or we could say 4 and 50 hundredths squared. It's somewhere in between there. Here it's telling us to order the square root of 9 plus 5 pi squared and the square root of 52 from least to greatest. And we think 9 squared is a 3 we add 5, we're going to get an 8. So our first digit is an 8 for this one. We've got pi squared, that's 3.14 times 3.14, which gives us approximately 9.8596. So that's the next one. And the square root of 52 is approximately 7.1 because it's so close to the square root of 49. We could say it's a little more than 7, now we can put these in order, and the least would be the square root of 52. Then we would have 8 as the square root of 9 plus 5, and then we would have pi squared. These are in order from least to greatest. Now we can plot them on the number line. We know the square root of 52 is just a little more than 7, because it's a little more than the square root of 49. We know that the square root of 9 plus 5 is 8, and pi squared is approximately 9.8596, so it's very close to 10, and we've been able to plot them on the number line from least to greatest. Now let's see if you can follow me on this one. It says, if real numbers A, B, C are in order from least to greatest, what's the order of their opposites from least to greatest? So using a number line, we can see we have A, B, and C and they're in order from least to greatest, 1, 2, 3, what is the order of their opposites? That means the numbers across 0 on the left side of the number line from least to greatest. But if we assign A as equal to 1, B as equal to 2, and C as equal to 3 in order from least to greatest, what would be their opposites? Well, across the number line, the opposite of A would be negative A. That would be negative 1. And the opposite of B would be negative B. That would be negative 2, the opposite of 2. And for C, which is 3, it would be negative C, which would be negative 3. So their opposites from least to greatest 
are negative C, negative B, negative A in order from least to greatest. Negative C is the farthest left on the number line, so it's the least. Okay, we're finished with 1.3b and we're moving on to the last part of the lesson, ordering real numbers in a real world context. So remember to use perfect squares to help you put them in order and remember that you can play with the decimals and find decimal numbers between the decimal numbers that will get you closer to a good estimate. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and I hope you join me for the last part of the lesson. Bye.